Hi there. Welcome back to the course Behavioral and Personal Finance. In this week, we'll learn about alternative investment and related portfolio strategies. I'm sure you must have heard of several new asset classes that have emerged over the recent years because of the advent of technology. Well, one of the new asset classes that has been in limelight in recent past is cryptocurrencies have you heard of bitcoins or any other cryptocurrencies these cryptocurrencies have emerged as new asset classes where people would like to invest their money and obtain substantially high return in short period of time there are several new asset classes that have emerged recently including private equity venture capital even the traditional asset classes or the medium of exchange in the past that is commodities have also come up as new asset classes that people would like to invest in this week we'll learn about these asset classes and related characteristics and how we can use these asset classes in our portfolios this session basically focuses on two concepts the basic idea of alternative investment and how these alternative investment can serve as the asset allocation strategies over and above the traditional asset classes first of all we would like to know why these new asset classes have to be understood well before you actually incorporate in the uh, portfolios that you would like to hold typically we have learned that the asset allocation strategies are done on the basis of optimizing risk and return well when we me when we talk about asset allocation we basically mean the amount of money distributed across different asset choices that you have and the money that you have kept aside for investment so essentially asset allocation implies that if you have 100 rupees of money and you want to invest let's say certain amount of money in one asset class and certain remaining amount of money in other asset class basically it is kind of a pie chart where suppose this portion of your money has been invested in bonds let's say you want to keep it aside so bonds that gives you 6% of return and then you would like to invest some part of money in equities so this is your equity investment that might give a return anywhere suppose 12 to 15% and then you would like to hold up some amount of money in cash so this is your liquid asset so let's call it cash or liquid asset that has almost nil return or somewhere maybe in certain cases you earn 2 to 4% of return on these assets also and then you have certain assets in terms of money that you have put aside in so this is your investment in some other asset class let's say gold or real estate and so on so when we talk about asset allocation we essentially mean this kind of portfolio that you are holding so if you have certain amount of money you can keep some amount of money in cash some amount of money be invested in equities some amount of money invested in bonds 
and remaining money can be invested in other asset class uh, classes such as gold or other precious metals real estate or any other assets that you want to hold as your portfolio investment now the allocation of this asset portfolio where you have multiple assets can be done on the basis of a traditional method that we have already learned earlier where we know that there is one method called mean variance optimization where where we try to optimize the risk and return associated with portfolios and then we try to find a suitable weight which can give us some appropriate or optimal return on our investment and if you have you are able to recall we had discussed earlier when we tried to learn about capital asset pricing model we know that if this is how the risky portfolio frontier looks like if we include a risk free asset you have some uh, point called uh, the tangent point that is a market portfolio and this is your risk free rate of return and you can hold any portfolio that will be lying across this line and you can make optimal allocation of assets based on this mean variance optimization given by Markowitz. So, so if you remember we had discussed this approach in detail and we try to find a method known as CAPM which is capital asset pricing model that gives us the expected rate of return for any asset given certain risk free rate and the return on market asset and the beta that we try to understand with the help of optimization of risk and return. Now, so far these approaches and methods can be applied directly and with much ease to the traditional investment or traditional avenues of investments such as equities, bonds and other related assets. But when it comes to alternative investments or the new asset classes such as real estate, commodities, cryptocurrencies, private equity, venture capital and other similar asset classes that have emerged because of the new technology and new uh, areas of investment. We try to understand how this traditional mean variance optimization to form asset allocation can be modified with the help of new asset classes to generate higher returns. Remember the ultimate objective of any individual any investor would be to earn more than a normal return which is basically outperform the benchmark and earn substantially higher return than the benchmark return. With this objective we try to learn more about alternative investment as investment strategy and how these alternative investment avenues can be allocated in our portfolios. So, to start with alternative investments can be defined as the new asset classes that fall outside of traditional investments such as stocks, bonds and cash. Well, here we highlight new asset classes or many emerging asset classes including private equity, venture capital, real estate, commodities and so on because they fall outside the purview of traditional asset classes such as equities which are basically investment in shares, bonds which are fixed income investments and cash which are basically no return or almost nil return investment. So, when we talk about alternative investment anything else in which an individual or institution can invest may be called an alternative investment because alternative investment represents or rather it includes a wide range of offerings but limit the discussion is limited to the various type of major categories that can be used as investment avenue by the investors. 
The basic characteristic of alternative investment is they provide an opportunity to earn a reasonable return with a manageable risk because remember the ultimate objective of any investor is to earn highest possible return with the lowest possible risk or at least highest possible return for a given level of risk. So, even if you try to contextualize this with the traditional approach of asset allocation which is mean variance optimization and subsequently we derive the capital asset pricing model, we know that an investor can earn the highest possible return for a given level of risk in such a way that can be derived like this. So, if you have a two frontier uh, portfolio case where you have risk and you have return, you know that there will be a risky asset frontier and then you have a risk free asset which tan which is tangent from tangent with your risky frontier. So, this portfolio will give you a, a frontier where you can invest at any point of time in along with this particular curve. So, suppose you want to invest here which gives you this much amount of risk and this much amount of return. So, you know that for any given level of return you have to carry this much amount of risk. Now, similarly if you have an objective to achieve certain level of risk you know that you cannot bear more than that that much of risk you can figure out how much return you are going to get. So, for example, suppose this is the maximum level of return risk you can bear. So, for this level of risk you know that this is the return that you are going to get. So, this is why alternative investment also fulfills this objective of earning a reasonable rate of return or rather reasonable rate of high return at a manageable risk level for an investor. Alternative investment also provides a good opportunity to participate in different markets because with the help of alternative investments you can not only diversify your portfolio across markets, you can also diversify your portfolio across asset classes and in fact across different countries as well. So, here what it provides you with is you can invest in assets which have exposure to markets other than your home market. For example, if you are sitting in India, you can invest in assets as alternative investment that have exposure to foreign countries or foreign economies. For example, if you invest in Bitcoin, you know that Bitcoins are affected or the prices of Bitcoin are influenced by several factors across globe. So, you are actually taking an exposure that have influence or relevance across the border. Similarly, if you invest in alternative investment such as let us say uh, real estate or private equity, you have an option to diversify your portfolio across assets and you can not only invest in equity market, but also invest at the same time in private equity or private debt or similarly you can also invest in let us say distressed equity or any other asset class that you would like to hold your investment in. And finally, the alternative investment approaches provide you strategies or investment uh, methods that can be made available only to exclusive set of investors. And it is not the set of assets or it is not uh, typically available for general investing public as is the case with stock, bond and other investment traditional investment avenues. So, here alternative investment provides you an opportunity that are very exclusive and you can invest and take advantage of that particular opportunity. Now, let us uh, discuss a bit about different types of alternative investments. So, these are categorized into two broad themes. 
traditional alternative investments and modern alternative investment. So, traditional alternative investments are basically real estate, private equity and commodities. So, when we talk about real estate as an investment avenue, basically it is the ownership interest in land or structured build attached to the land. It could be direct ownership or indirect ownership. So, when we talk about direct ownership in real estate, it is basically investment in residences, commercial real estate properties and agricultural land. It could be industrial, it could be other uh, type of land or properties built on land. And if it is about indirect holding or indirect ownership in real estate, basically it includes REITs which are real estate investment trusts. These are investment uh, channels or investment avenues which expose which are exposed to real estate properties and real estate companies, but they are managed as separate trust just like mutual fund. Indirect ownership in real estate could also be a real estate trust or infrastructure fund such as funds or mutual funds which have investment in companies uh, which are involved in infrastructure development. So, basically the idea of having real estate as an alternative investment is to take an exposure for your investment towards real estate or related companies and it could be direct or indirect ownership. Second type of uh, traditional alternative investment is private equity. Basically private equity is uh, the class of investment that has ownership interest in publicly traded companies. It also includes venture capital firms. So, venture capital by definition are equity financing or of new or growing companies which are privately held. It could be closely held companies as well and buyout funds. So, the buyout funds of established companies through private equity fund is also possible to be held as alternative investment. So, when we talk about private equity, we essentially mean that you hold some amount of ownership in a publicly traded company or privately held company or companies that have ownership stake or that has some investment as buyout funds. These are basically more popular because smaller companies or companies which have not gone public yet can raise funds through private equity and they are considered to be more riskier of course, but at the same time there is a very high scope for earning substantial amount of return in such investment. Third type of traditional investment in alternative class is commodities. Although commodities are traditionally used as investment and a medium of exchange since the evolution of human civilization. But uh, in modern context commodities as an alternative investment are basically the agreements to buy or sell a tangible asset or an actual physical good that is generally or relatively homogeneous in nature. Basically it includes three types of commodities or three categories of commodities. It could be energy related commodities such as coal or crude oil, even electricity or power. It could be metal related commodities such as gold, silver, aluminum, platinum, copper and any other such commodity uh, metals. And third category is agriculture product related commodities such as coffee beans, wheat, soya bean and sugar. These are just in uh, uh, not exhaustive list, they, these are just indicative to different examples of three type of commodities energy, metals and agricultural product of agricultural commodities. So, basically if you uh, want to hold investment directly or indirectly in commodities, you can either directly hold in terms of buy or sell of tangible asset or tang physical goods such as en energy, metals or agricultural product 
an alternative way to hold a commodity investment is to invest in commodity related funds because of re in recent times we have seen that there are funds which have investment exposure in energy as a as an investment class they also hold uh, precious metals such as gold silver platinum copper and they also uh, have some investment in agricultural product in order to help the companies involved in agriculture produce to manage their risk so these three examples are for traditional alternative investment now let's move on to modern alternative investment so modern alternative investment also consists of three uh, broad examples basically these are hedge funds so hedge funds are loosely defined as the investment funds that are regulated to little less rigorously and they are actively managed by expert financial managers and they collate or compile pooled investment from a different type of investors or different investor categories as a special vehicle that uses a wide wide variety of investment strategies and these strategies include aggressive long or short positions and using arbitrage and leverages so if we talk about hedge fund in little more details there are certain characteristic or unique features of hedge funds and first unique feature is they have very loose regulation in most of the markets hedge funds are less stringently regulated than a typical mutual fund or any other investment fund just like any other fund it has pooled investments collected from different investors and then they can take strategies which are very aggressive typically and they uses arbitrage and leverage so these are some important characteristic of hedge funds so when we invest in hedge funds we rely on the expertise of hedge fund managers who can take aggressive positions both long and short so when we talk about long and short position which means they can either buy into such uh, assets or such investments or they can take a position of short selling or holding that is not the, in their own hands uh, as investment strategy their focus is always on arbitrage and leverage because arbitrage gives them uh, an opportunity to earn more than normal or more than the market return always and leverage basically gives them an advantage of uh, using money that have been borrowed from different sources and use that money to invest in assets which are going to give them higher rate of return second class of modern alternative investment is distressed equity so by definition distressed equity includes securities of companies or government entities that are either already in default or under bank corruption product protection or in distress and heading towards such a condition so basically these are companies or entities that have been defunct or bankrupt or they are almost on the verge of bankruptcy so the idea of any investment manager or investor to invest in such asset such as distressed equity is to make sure that the asset is worth taking up and the investment that they are going to make might be uh, used for reviving the company and earning some amount of return that is substantially higher than the traditional investment returns the most common feature or the most common approach of distressed securities are bonds and bank debt they are obviously very risky because you are investing in almost dead investment or dead assets which might not re revive so if you are investing in distressed equity you typically rely on the management skill and the potential of the manager or investment managers 
to be precise in in order to revive that companies or at least get some return or earn some return from that investment in distressed equity. Many times it might happen that fund managers or those who are investing in distressed equity, they secure some expertise from outside their uh, fund and use that management expertise to revise that company or entities so that they can generate substantially high return for their investors. An alternative uh, approach could be they buy out into such distressed equity or in, uh, entities which are almost bankrupt or bankrupt already and then they try to sell out whatever assets that particular entity or company has and then uh, the return is generated sufficiently to give uh, exposure to the investors that they have uh, collect, uh, compiled on. Third example of alternative modern alternative investment is managed futures. Uh, so, basically these are assets or these are investments which fall into a category that includes privately pooled investment. They basically invest in cash or spot or derivative market for the benefit of their investors. They can take short or long position in future contracts and options in future contract in the global commodities, interest rate derivatives, equity and other currency market. So, basically uh, when we intend to invest in managed futures, we want to invest in assets which has exposure to derivative market largely and that derivative market exposure could be related to commodities or interest rate derivatives equity derivatives or even currency derivatives. So, these are three broad examples of modern alternative investment. Having understood the uh, traditional and modern alternative investment, basically we want to know what more characteristics can be understood in terms of the features or attributes of alternative investment so that we can consider this as a potential tool to invest our money in. So, the idea here is you have some amount of money to be invested in and you have a choice to invest your all, all your money in traditional investment such as equities, bonds and cash or you have a choice to invest part of your money in traditional assets and remaining money in alternative investments such as real estate, commodities, private equity, venture capital and so on. Most of us have some investment exposure to real estate in one way or the other. If we have some investment in uh, real estate in the form of let us say second home or any other house land, land or building or any other house properties, it could be considered as part of investment portfolio. So, yes, we do have some uh, alternative investment already in our portfolio. The reason or the characteristic of these two separate categories of investment are the difference between the return that typical alternative investment holds or generates. So, if you know typically alternative investment generates substantially high return because they are highly risky as well. So, suppose you invest in land or house property 20 years ago at a very reasonable price, today that property has become worth multiple times your investment because of several other social, economic and political factors. So, you have a choice or you have a scope for earning substantially high return. Another feature is it is also available to very specific set of investors. Not everyone can invest in all alternative investment avenues uh, for several reasons including the amount of money that is required to invest including the regulations and even information asymmetry because not all uh, investing public might be knowing about the opportunities to invest in alternate investment fund. And then there are arbitrage opportunities that are available to investors of alternative investment fund. So, these are three categories or three features basically because of which alternative investment funds are 
more attractive to general investment public and uh, this is why people should typically include alternative investment opportunities as part of their traditional portfolio so that they can outperform the market and uh, most of the other uh, investing public. In this session, this is it. Thank you very much.